we travel this earth shifting sands that transcend all the reason of man but the things that matter the most in this world they can Let me ask you the question that reflects on the song. Do you believe no matter the cost? Amen. Think about that. That's a heavy, heavy words. Um, would you turn to two passages of Scripture today? Isaiah 45, verse 5. Isaiah 45, 5. And then you'll have to go back to 2 Samuel 22, verse 2. Isaiah 45, 5. 2 Samuel 22, 2. There's four twos in that. 2 Samuel 22, 2. Isaiah 45, 5. 2 Samuel 22, 2. Today's message is called What We Believe About God. What We Believe About God. If I were to ask you this morning, if you believed in God, 
Think about this. If I were to ask you this morning, if you believed in God, I'm most confident without a doubt that almost all of you would say what? Yes. Yes. Okay, maybe not everybody. (laughs) You would say what? Yes. Yes. But if I were to challenge you a bit further, I'm asking you to, to say that you believe in God, but ask you to describe God to me, to give me a list of defining attributes to give me a list of defining characteristics about him. I'm not, I'm not so sure that there would be so many confident yeses. If I asked you to, if, if not to explain God, but to give me some characteristics, some attributes, some elements of the Lord, some things that matter to you the most to God, about God, could you give me the response? Why, why would it be so difficult? Here, here's, the, here's the tough reality for a lot of us. So many people claim to believe in God, but very few really know who He is. So many people claim to believe, and they'll say it till they're blue in the face. I believe, I believe, I believe. Yet they know very little about the God that they claim to believe in in what he is like and how we can know these things about him that are certain you know people will make all kinds of blanket statements about the lord but can you back them up can you show me chapter verse about what you believe about god it's like this and you're going to find this and i really want you to know i want you to know this about the lord that that god that god knows all about you all right and god loves you right God desires a a relationship with you that he's provided a way, the way, for you to know him on a very uh, personal level through Christ. His longing to know you, it's very evident. God wants to know you. He knows all about you. He's gone the greatest lengths possible, okay, for him to know you and you to know him. But what about your longing to know God? You ever ask yourself that? What about my longing my desire to know this God that I, I proclaim, that I sing about, that I talk to, or, or that I witness about. What about that longing inside of you to know Him? Do you just have a, do you have a deep desire, a deep, a deep longing, a, a craving, a hunger, a thirst to know the God that you say you believe in? It's kind of hard, and I even think somewhat crit- hypocritical, for so many of us to say that we believe. Actually, of Americans say they believe in God. 92% means 9 out of 10 people say they believe in God, yet so many people live as if they don't have a clue who He is. People live so defeated. 90% say they believe in God, yet they live defeated. They live discouraged. They live depressed. They live selfish. People people are miserable. People are discontent. People are dissatisfied. Yet they claim a relationship with an all-sufficient God? Something doesn't add up. All around us are people with longings. Okay? People want to be loved. People want relationships. People, people want uh, acceptance. People want success. People want to fit in. People want communication. People want happiness. People want peace and a purpose and a plan. People want relief from this constant pushing and prodding world. And people will say they want salvation. And all the while, God is in their midst. He's here. God is here, and he can provide and be all that we need, and he's the answer to every longing that you ever, ever had, but we live as if he's not here. I'm not talking about just out there. I'm talking about in here, too. Everybody looks like they're hopeless. We live as if we're hopeless, yet you have Jesus. (laughs) We claim to believe in this God, yet we know very little about him. We're in this study called Covenants, what we believe. And, and next to what we believe about the Word, we talked about how the Word is foundational. Okay, what we believe comes from this Word. It is the Word of God, the very Word of God, the inspired Word of God, the breath of God. We talked about what the Word does for you, how it empowers you, equips you, trains you up in righteousness so that you would be complete. And ne- the next vow that we have, oh my goodness. 
The next vow that we have is that we believe in God. We believe in God. Now, what do you believe if you were asked, if you were interviewed? What, what do you believe about God? Do you know him? He's made himself available, right? To be, to be made known. He holds nothing back. Everything that you need to know about him is right here. Okay? Uh, he's an open book. <laughs> in that zone. <laughs> he's no, and, and I'm not challenging you today to, to figure him out, okay? Because, because none of us are ever going to be able to do that. You know that's impossible. We can't possibly wrap our frail little minds around him. He's a big God. All right, but because he's the greatest. There's no one like him. Uh, there, there's no one higher than him. But you can know him. You can. You can know what you believe about him. Don't worry about those things that are impossible for you to, for you to wrap your mind around, to know that he exists, to know that he is real, to know that he is in your midst and that he is at work. All right, you, you may not have all the answers about him. That's okay. You've got enough to know about him. It'll take you a lifetime to know. All right, and, and our assumptions, our faulty views, our misconceptions of him need to be left at the door. Okay, you need, you need to open up this book, build your life, your study, your theology, your doctrine, your knowledge around what God's word has to say about himself and put your faith and trust in him. He's written on every single page. Okay, he knows you. He wants to be known by you. Now, I've tried to do this, okay, with this series. I've tried to pull out that vow that you made um, uh, to Midway Baptist Church, but not to the church, but, but not just to the church, but to the Lord, okay, about what you believe. This is what our covenant and our, and our covenant say uh, about, about what we believe about God. First line, the church covenant says, having been led, as we believe by the Spirit of God, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith. On the profession of our faith. In who? Who? God. In God. Amen. You made a covenant with this church family based on belief in God. Amen. Okay, now what do we believe? We believe that there is one and only one living and true God. It's an absolute. There's no room for fixation there. He is an intelligent, spiritual, and personal being. This is straight out of our covenants. He is the creator, redeemer, preserver, and ruler of the universe. He is infinite in holiness, reverence, and obedience. He is all-powerful and knowing, and his perfect knowledge extends to all things past, present, and future, including the future decisions of his free creatures. To him we owe the highest love reverence and obedience he is revealed to us as the father the son and the holy spirit each with distinct personal attributes but without the vision of nature essence or being and then listed is a number of scriptures that support what we believe about god i'll tell you what was hard to do finding a single passage of scripture that would encompass all that we're going to talk about god with so what i did is i, I found two two really good ones actually Isaiah 45, verse 5. All right, um, when this was written, um, God was trying to prove to Israel something here uh, that he could use even um, the, 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 the wick, most wicked of kings, uh, non-believers like Cyrus. Okay, King Cyrus brought the Israelites out of bondage. Okay, gave them, gave them permission to come back home. Cyrus wasn't a believer in God. He became a believer in God, but he wasn't yet. And so in Isaiah 45, 5, this is a passage that is talking about how God used Cyrus. But listen to what Isaiah says about the Lord. Actually, this is what the Lord says about the Lord. It says, I am the Lord, and what? There is no other. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is how many gods? There is no God besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. That's also found in Deuteronomy 4.35. Then I want you to go to 2 Samuel 22. I want you to read verse 2. Trying to find a scripture that would support what we believe in one, you know, just one statement about God. Now, this is an awesome chapter. I encourage you to read about the description of the Lord in this chapter. But look at verse 2. Look at verse 2, uh, 2 Samuel 22, 2. David wrote this at the end of his life. Okay, God had given him a settled kingdom. 
Okay, the promises of the Messiah are, are in his line. Okay, he's, he's, he's ready to go home to the Lord. But look what he says about the Lord in verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Actually, I want to read a few more, okay? The God of my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my Savior. You save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to what? To be praised, worthy of your worship. Amen. All right, look at verse 19. They, con they confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was what? My support. Then I want you to skip down to 29. For you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord shall enlighten my darkness. For you, for by you I can run against a troop. With God, you're the majority. Okay, but my God, I, but my God, I can leap over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. For who is God except the Lord? Who is God except the Lord? And who is a rock except our God? God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of deer and sets me on my high places and then 47 says the lord lives blessed be we see that word rock again blessed be my rock let god be exalted the rock of my salvation it is god who avenges me and subdues the peoples under me he delivers me from my enemies you also lift me up above those who rise against me you have delivered me from the violent man therefore i will give thanks to you O lord among the gentiles and sing praises to your name he is the tower of salvation to his king and shows mercy to his anointed to david and his descendants forevermore i am the lord Lord. There is no other. There is no God besides me. Verse 2 says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Amen. Great descriptions of what we're to believe about God. And I want you for the next few moments just to allow, uh, allow me to share with you some, th some truths about what we believe about the Lord. Here's the first thing. This is what we believe about God. And if you have vowed to be a part of of the church family this is what you vow to believe about him too god is our foundation yes. just as the word of god is our foundation god is our foundation he at second samuel 22 2 says the lord is my rock mm -hmm. can you say that with me the lord, the lord is my rock the lord is our as our foundation isaiah 45 5 says i am the lord and what there is no other there is no other. Two very firm truths, right? Okay, rock means stronghold. Rock means security. As our rock, he is eternally strong. Okay, he is, he is eternally steadfast. In other words, he is immovable. He's immovable. He's the only true foundation to build your life upon. Okay, he is the rock. He is constant. God doesn't change. He's constant. We live in a world that is constantly changing. All right. Um, uh, you think about updates being made on everything, upgrades, people change, culture changes, your, your dress changes, customs change, the church changes. Our God does not change. He does. Now listen, folks, that doesn't mean he's a boring God. Okay, that doesn't mean that he's out of tune. That doesn't mean he's out of date. Uh, he's very, very contemporary, if you have it. He, he's very much in with what's going on today. But I'll tell you this, God is set in his ways. Amen. He said, he, Hebrews 13, that says, 13 that says, he is the same yesterday, mm -hmm. today, and forever. Malachi 3, 6, he said, I do not change. I change not. <coughs> I changed my, John, James 1.17 says the Father has no variableness, no shadow of turning. He is the only way for salvation. He does not change. He's not going to change to suit your opinions, your assumptions, your wants, okay, and, and our pettiness. He's not going to change. Right. right? He stays the same. He is the only God. For someone to make such a statement like that, to say, I am the Lord, there is no other, the Lord is my rock, you'd have to be one of two things. You'd have to either be a lunatic or you'd have to be Lord. I'm going to go with Lord today, all right? I'm going to go with the creator God who made you and formed you and put you here, okay, in the life that you have now and gave you the life to come. I'm going to go with Lord, an all-powerful, immovable God. He's permanent. He doesn't change. 
Okay? He is who he is, has always been, and while he, al he always will be who he is. Okay? My God doesn't need an upgrade. That's right. I have an iPhone. iPhone told me. Can you believe this? It told me. <laughs> iPhone told me the other day that I needed to upgrade. <laughs> that I need, I need new software. That software will blow my phone up, okay? Because my phone is old, <laughs> okay? But he said, I need new software and a new version. Why? Because my old one has bugs. It has glitches. My old one has mistakes, things that need to be tweaked. For something to need an upgrade, that means that something is wrong. Something is not working right. I'm glad God doesn't need fixing today. Uh, we need stability in life, don't we? We need stability. We need a firm foundation. That's why God can be our foundation and should be your foundation. He doesn't move. He doesn't change. I counseled a young man just a month ago. Okay, Parents in jail. Bounces from home to home. Uh, no day for him has ever, has ever been what you would call stable. He doesn't have it like some of you all have it like I have. There's no stability in his life. Always something different. It's really sad. But then I told him about our God. Okay, told him about Jesus Christ. Told him that our God would give him some much needed stability. He could put his faith in Jesus Christ. All right, and he'll have some stability. Aren't you glad for that? Okay, in a world that isn't so stable, that's constantly changing and turning and, and, and crumbling at the foundation, God is our foundation. Amen. And as our foundation, He's not just not immovable, He's immeasurable. Okay? He's, he's infinite. He has no limits. That means He's eternal. That means from no beginning, no end. That's hard to wrap your mind around, isn't it? Okay? God has no beginning. He is. I wanted to call this message, God is. Just leave it there. God is. He is. No beginning, no end, no effect. Time, hours, church service times have no effect on him. He keeps moving. He keeps working. Okay? He has no concept of time. <laughs> All right? He has no limits. He cannot be stopped. He's all-powerful. That means he's omnipotent. Y'all say omnipotent. Omnipotent. It means he's limitless. Okay, in power. He's immeasurable. He's infinite. Uh, he's also all-knowing. That means omniscient. Say omniscient. Omniscient. All right? And that means, and that means that he's all-knowing. He's immeasurable. He's infinite. Okay, he's also all over the place. Say omnipresent. omnipresent. He's everywhere. I told Micah that the other day. I said, God's in your room right now. <laughs> he said, is he hiding? <laughs> I said, no. And then it led into this long theological discussion about how God is spirit. You see him through Christ. Where is he, Daddy? <laughs> he's here. That's all I could say. Look, go to bed. Okay. <laughs> but he's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. That's a comforting truth, too, if God's everywhere. If he's all-knowing, if he's all-powerful, he's all in your business. Okay? That's all right, though, because he's right there with you no matter what. He's sovereign. Okay? That's another big word about God. People like to use, he's sovereign. That means he is involved in everything that goes on in this world. Whether, whether you agree or not, he's sovereign. Whatever comes to pass, it had to go through him first. Okay? He's sovereign. All right? Whatever happens in this world, he allowed. Psalm 90 says, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. That means no matter what I face, no matter how hard life gets, no matter how bitter the road, how tough the fight, how difficult the circumstance, I've got a solid rock in Christ to stand on. Okay? So, and, and I need to read that today. I needed to read, the Lord is my rock today. Didn't you? Amen. He's my rock. Right. He's my foundation. You need to know. You need to believe that you serve a limitless, all-powerful God. Amen. He's your foundation. He's great and mighty. We sung, great and mighty is the Lord our God. Amen. Great and mighty is He. It doesn't matter what you struggle with, what fear you have, what disease you hold, what sin and tank that you entangle with. As long as He's in charge, He can be your strength. Amen. Okay, now, now don't you give up, folks. Don't give up. Don't you quit. Don't you abandon the rock. He is your strength. He's infinite. How about we try Jesus for once and you'll have some stability. Okay? He, he's holding on to you anyways. You don't have to just hold on to him. He's holding on to you. Okay? He is your rock. Uh, I met a dear lady um, this weekend. All kinds of things going on in her life. Got to tell her about Jesus and now she knows about his strength. 
because she knows about his power, about his love, about his grace. There's nothing that she's going through that he can't handle. There's nothing that you're going through that he can't handle. All right, you can call us weak if you want, but the way I look at it, if God's holding me up, I'm stronger than I've ever been. <laughs> right? He's your foundation. If he's immovable, if he's immeasurable, if he's infinite, then that means he's immaculate. He's perfect. He's holy. We believe he is righteous. We believe he is good. That's the kind of foundation I want to build my life on, right? <laughs> An immovable, immeasurable, infinite, immaculate God. He's not like us. We're sinful people. You agree? Uh, we're prideful people. We're, we're rebellious. We're blemished. We're actually, apart from the Lord, we're no good, rotten, nasty, wretched, disgusting, flawed, puny people. Okay? And, and we're unworthy, all because of our sin. But God, our rock, there is no one like Him. He's perfect. He's true. He's trustworthy. He's sacred. He's pure and undefiled and faithful. He's just good. He's good. He cannot be corrupted. God can't be tampered with. He can't be bribed or tempted or persuaded to go against himself and his word. And if I'll cling to the rock, if I'll put my faith in the solid rock of God, I too can be holy because he is holy. I can't possibly know him. I can't possibly walk with him, trust in him without him rubbing off on me. Okay? Because he is holy, he makes you holy. Because he is good, he makes you good. Every good thing that you do is because of his goodness, because of his grace, because of his power, because he is immovable, immeasurable, infinite, immaculate. That's what he wants you to be. You don't, don't accept the substitutes. Don't accept anything less. God is our foundation. And without him being your foundation, your life crumbles. When hardships do come, you crumble. When, when something comes your way that you weren't expecting, you fall face down. <laughs> but because he's a rock, you can stand. Here's another thing. God is also our fortress. This might be my favorite part of the verse. God is our fortress. Look at, look at the second part of verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. There's no one like our God. <laughs> no other God, no other name, no other power. He is my fortress. Fortress is a castle. Right? Fortress is a stronghold, a, a fort. Um, I, I was really excited Thursday uh, because Micah brought home a castle. That pumped me up, okay? Uh, not a dollhouse, not a tea set, but a castle. That's manly, yes. All right? That's a, that's a man toy. And, and, and castles, castles are where the king dwells. All right? Micah has a lot of girlfriends, okay? And, and so <laughs> that's why I'm excited about the castle. All right, castles are where the king dwells. Castles are where the king defends. Castle is where the king defeats. Okay, something to know about our God today. He's unbeatable. That's right. Right? He, he's never lost before. Okay, he's invincible. He's all powerful. He is able. All, I, I am the Lord is what he says. There is no other. The Lord is my fortress. He's second to none. All right? He's undefeated. Never will be defeated. You know how I know? I've read the end of the book. He doesn't lose, okay? He wins. And if you have Christ, you win too. That's the deal for me. Okay? Uh, he doesn't just win, actually. He conquers. Okay? There's a difference between just winning and conquering. He, he destroys the enemy. Okay? And he constantly fights for your life. Constantly fights for your soul daily. Every moment of every day. You have an enemy. You realize that? Yes. You realize it? You realize that you serve an immovable, uh, foundational God, but you got an enemy that wants to defeat you and me, wants to destroy you, wants to divide you. you. You have an enemy, and every day he's firing shots at the fortress of God. Every single day. Been reminded of that this week, okay? And, and if you're not fighting, you better start worrying. Because the enemy is fighting, okay? He wants to bring you down, fighting all the time, shooting fiery darts at the fortress of God. But here's the thing. The only shots the enemy lands are when you abandon your fortress. Amen. The enemy has tasted victory over souls. It's evident 
the lives that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the direction that they're heading. The enemy has tasted victory over souls, lives that chose to reject God's defense. But when we trust in Christ, God, he becomes your fortress, your protection, your wall of defense. Job 22, 25 says, yes, the Almighty shall be my defense. Who are you fighting with? Who are you fighting with? Who's on your team? Okay, who's, who's your protection? Who's, who's your fortress? Job says the Almighty is my defense. Psalm 710 says my defense is of God who saves the upright in heart. Isaiah 25, 4 says for you have been a defense for the helpless, a defense for the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat, for the breath of the ruthless is like a rainstorm against the wall. God is our defender. He's all the defense you need. God is our, our fortress. He's a warrior. He fights your battles for you. Amen. I like that part. Amen. <laughs> he fights for you. Okay, The greatest battle that you ever faced, the greatest battle that I ever faced, is the battle of our sin, our condemnation. The enemy had us right where, we, where he wanted us. Okay? We were down for the count. We were good as dead. We were in our sins. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We had abandoned the fortress that we called home in the Lord. Think about the beginning. Adam and Eve had a fortress in God, walked with God, were with God, fellowshipping with God. He was in their midst. What did they do when they sinned? They said, God isn't enough. <laughs> he, he's not enough. So what do they do? They, they abandoned their fortress for their own. And by your choice, by my choice, by their choice, our sin, our merit, we are banished from the castle. Okay, but what does God do? What does he do? He brings the fortress to you. He doesn't stay in his castle, okay, and rules by himself. He, he, he leaves the castle, okay, abandons his own castle, goes to war himself. He, because he is a loving God, a merciful God, a gracious God, a jealous God, will not lose. He fights the battle for us, but he did it with a strange and unheard weapon. He used this weapon called the cross. Okay? The king of the castle leaves the castle, lays his life down for the people of his kingdom, and he died, brutally died. Okay, blood shed, or just ripped to shreds. The enemy struck hard. And for about three days, everybody thought the fortress was the enemy's. Everybody thought that the one who abandoned his castle, the king was dead is what everybody thought. But that cross that Jesus died on, oh, this is when it gets good. Well, that cross that Jesus died on became the very drawbridge that lets you back into the fortress. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that something? Christ has the victory. The cross was not an instrument of defeat. The cross was a weapon of mass destruction to the enemy. And for you and for me, the cross is the way of merciful deliverance. Hey, you got to get to know our God. <laughs> All right? He fights the battles for you. Exodus 14, 34 says, keep silent. 1 Samuel 17 says, the battle is the Lord's. It's the Lord's. God is our foundation. He's our fortress. Last thing today, he is our freedom. Amen. He's our freedom. What does the verse say? The Lord is my rock and my fortress and what? I, I my deliverer. deliverer. He is my deliverer. Can you say that? He's my deliverer. He's my deliverer. It means he sets you free. Okay. Uh, deliver means escape. You're free. In Christ, this is what God frees you from to do, okay, frees you to be. God has made you alive in Christ Jesus. That's freedom, okay? You're free from the bondage of sin if you have Jesus Christ. You're free from eternal condemnation. You're free from death. And what are you free to be in Christ? What are you free? Because God is our freedom, because he's our foundation, because he's our fortress, you're now free to be like him. It's possible now. Okay? It, you're now free to walk in the Spirit. You're now free to live victoriously. You're now free to share the gospel. You're now free to live for Him. You're now free to be a bondservant of the Lord, to be holy, to be righteous, to live on purpose. You're now free to worship Him only <laughs> because He alone is worthy. Okay? To not just believe in Him, but to know Him. 
That's freedom. It's freedom in knowing Christ. You see why it's so important today? To, why it's important to, to know God? To know who He is? To know what He is capable of? To know what He has done? To know what He will do through you? Because what you believe about the Lord determines whether or not you truly know Him. What you believe about the Lord determines whether or not you truly know Him. And knowing Him is the difference, okay? Knowing Him is the difference. You say, I believe. What do you believe? What do you believe? What do you know about Him? Better yet, do you know Him? Do you want to know Him deeper? See, we ask that question, what, what do you believe about God? You, you don't have to wander anymore. People get caught up in all these questions and all these uncertain. You don't have to wonder anymore. He's made himself known right here. Let's talk for 40 minutes on him being your foundation. Okay? Your fortress and, and, and your freedom. You don't have to wonder anymore. He's made himself known. But do you desire to know him personally? I just gave you a few things about him today. There's a lot more. Okay, but, but know that he wants you to know him. He wants you to love him. He wants you to be in fellowship with him, to serve him, to bring him glory through your life so that others may know him. you're created in his image. You and I are hopeless in sin, but Jesus paid it all. So now you can know him. No more excuses, folks. You, you can know him. Believe today. Get with God. There's zero, to, there's zero excuse to go on as if he's not there, to live in unbelief, to live defeated. You can't make it without him. Amen. You can't. And, and, and the consequences, if you try, are eternal. There is condemnation for the person who does not believe and know the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Give your life, your whole life to God. It's not about what you know about him. It's whether or not you know him. Do you know him? Do you stand? Probably just play something soft with an invitation time. Then we ask you two questions, okay? Two questions. First one is for the person who does not know the Lord. So the question is this. Do you know him? Ask yourself that within your heart. Do I know Jesus Christ? Do I know this God that you preached about today, that we've sung about today, that we learned about in Sunday school today, that I go to church for? Do I know this God? Do I know him? He says, I am the Lord. There is no other. Get to know me is what he said. It's your rock. You may not realize it today because you don't believe. You may not realize it today, but he is your foundation. What's your life like without Jesus Christ? It stinks, doesn't it? It's hard, okay? What about, what about your fortress? Who's fighting the battle for you right now? You trying to fight yourself? You trying to do this life on your own? You trying to go to war against the enemy on your own? You'll lose. You need God to be that foundation. You need God to be that fortress. What about your freedom? If, if we were to take a poll today and, and ask the people uh, this morning, how many of you feel like you're in bondage, you're like in mud, that you're stuck, that you, you're in a hole that you can't get out of? I wonder how many people would raise their hand and say, yes, I'm in bondage, I am sick, I am broken, I'm tired of losing, but yet you say you believe in God. He's your freedom. Let Him be. So do you know Him? I hope it's been very clear today, the gospel. Christ came, he died for you, he bled for you, gave his life for you, arose for you, lives for you today so that you'll have a relationship with him. If you'll just say, I believe, I believe with my heart, I believe in Christ, I believe that he came, that he died for my sins, that he paid the price for my sins, that he purchased a place for me in heaven. If I'll just trust in him as my savior, as my Lord, he'll save me. That's how you believe. So the first question was, do I know him? If you don't, I challenge you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. You don't have to wait until the invitation is over. If you want to know God, you come now. I'll talk with you. I'll pray with you. I'll show you the way to Christ. There's other people in this church that can do the same. If you need to know Christ, you come. You come. No holding back today. No shame. You come. I need Christ. Here's another thing for the believer today. Do you want to know him deeper? Just because you're saved... 
Just because you're saved doesn't mean that you know all about the Lord. You need to know him deeper, okay? You need to know him fully. Maybe God will put in your heart a desire to want to trust in Christ more, to read his word more, to get to know him more. That's the challenge for the believer today. Dig deep. Stop settling for this surface area of Christianity, okay? Get real with God. He wants to be real with you. If you need to respond to the gospel, you come. You come. today. <laughs> Want to grow deeper with them? You can come. y'all to love on too. God is alive and at work today. Um, this is Gabrielle Clark, right? Clark. Gabrielle is uh, Noel's sister. And um, Gabrielle, can you tell everybody what the Lord did for you this weekend? Um, I watched God's Not Dead and 
ever since I watched it, it just opened my heart up and I've been reading the scripture and it, I just felt him in my heart and I, I had to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Gabrielle gave her heart to Jesus this weekend. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> oh, a new sister. Yes. <laughs> wonderful. And this is Brandy. Okay. Uh, Brandy, um, Teresa Gamble uh, called a couple of days ago and uh, wanted to, to visit Brandy. Uh, Brandy's her neighbor. And um, came over to Brandy's house yesterday with Teresa. And um, we talked for quite a while. And uh, Brandy has a lot of things going on in her life that we need to be praying for, uh, for her about. But I'll get to the gist of it. She's going to handle it with Christ now. And uh, <laughs> Brandy gave her heart to Jesus in her, in her living room yesterday. And um, just asked her to come up so that we can love on her and encourage her. She has her family here too. She has a daughter and her boyfriend are with us today. Um, so this is your challenge uh, today, all right, Midway. You love on these folks. They're your new sisters in Christ. Show them, show them what it means to be a part of the family of God. We've got lots of work to do. This is wonderful. Okay, we get to, to, to love on them and encourage them, lift them up, affirm them in their decision. Let them know you're proud of them and that you care about them, okay? And be praying for them, all right? Because as soon as they leave this place, they're going to go back into the enemy's territory, all right? And we need to be praying that they'll stand strong in Christ. So it's been a blessed day today, hasn't it? It's been wonderful. Salvation has hit this place. I'm excited. All right. Let's pray together, and then y'all come and give them big midway love today. Lord, I love you. I thank you so much for um, what you have done this morning. Thank you for showing us how true your word really is. Lord, when we expect great things from you, you deliver. And God, I'm thankful for people that are praying, that are encouraging, that are sharing the gospel. It is evident today um, that the gospel is still at work, that lives are still being changed, hearts are being changed. I rejoice today for Brandy, and I rejoice today for Gabrielle. Thank you, Lord, for saving their souls, for coming to, into their life, for, for changing them and cleansing them. Lord, they may not have it all figured out. None of us do. Okay, but they know one thing for certain, that Jesus Christ is Lord of their life, that they have an eternal home in Christ, that they now can live on purpose in Jesus. And uh, Lord, I'm grateful for their salvation today. Thank you for saving them. And, and God, thank you, Lord, for willing vessels to share the gospel. I'm not sure who showed her the movie this weekend, but Lord, we thank you for them. Thank you for their willingness to show that to her so that she'll see the Lord. Thank you for obedience and responding. Thank you for Brandy today for allowing Teresa and I to come into her home and, and share the gospel. And Lord, thank you for her heart being open to the gospel. Thank you for softening that heart. Lord, we pray for her. We pray for her and the things that she's going to be going through and battling. We pray, Lord. It's not meant to be, to be done alone. That's why we have a church family. Help us to fight together. Lord, I just pray that you would bless them, bless their growth, Lord. Use us in whatever way we can um, uh, to, to grow them and help them grow in Christ. And we give you the glory. Thank you for what you have done today. You are our foundation. You are our rock, our strength, Lord. You are our deliverer. You are our fortress. And we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all come tonight, Fall Revival 7. I'm taking attendance. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs>